Okay, now let's come to the part three. Uh, we will introduce the data communication process. So for data communication process, we will introduce the process in the sender and in the middle and in the receiver. So first, from the sender's point of view, uh, we assume that if we want to access a web page, for example, this web page, then uh, what should be done in the application layer? Yeah, actually, the application layer needs to transmit an HTTP message to the remote uh, web server. So this message, you can see it as a data in the application layer. And then this data are transmitted to the transport layer. And because uh, it's a web page, so it doesn't allow any error. We need to use TCP as the transport layer protocol instead of UDP. So the TCP will add a header before this data to form a new packet. The packet in the transport layer we call it segment. And in the header, there are important informations. For example, the port number, source port number, destination port number are uh, written in this domain. And then the segment are transmitted down to the network layer. And network layer will add another header, which is the IP header. And they will add, for example, the IP address in the header. And then down to the data link layer. And in the data link layer, they will see this whole package as the payload. And then add a, both a header and a tail. So for the header, they will put, for example, the source MAC address, destination MAC address. And for the uh, tail, they need to put in some uh, CRC bits to check whether this packet is correctly transmitted. And finally, all these uh, zero and ones are transmitted to the physical layer, and they will translate these um, data into the signals the bit streams and then transmit to the media. So that's, uh, so in every layer, they will add a header and make a new packet. So this is called encapsulation. Then let's look at when the sender transmits out a packet using the physical layer into the media, then this packet will arrive first to a switch and then to the router or several different routers, and finally to the receiver. But in the switch, they only have two layers. They will not have the application layer, transport layer, and network layer. They only uh, decode the data and then encode again to send it to the media. For the router, they have one more layer, which is the network layer. They need to forward the packet to the correct outgoing link according to uh, the IP address of the destination. And finally, uh, they arrive to the receiver. Now let's look at what does the receiver do. So the receiver actually will receive the uh, signals. That is a 0-1 bit stream. Then they will do the decapsulation. They will um, check the header and tail. If it's correct, then they will send the payload to the upper layer. And this layer, they will also check the header. Yeah, uh, pay attention to this. So in where is the header? Actually, this header is a part of the payload here. Okay, so when the frame, the link layer transmits the payload to the upper layer, that is like this. So they will check the header. If it's correct, it is for, 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 for this receiver, then they will transmit the payload again up. And then the transport layer will extract the header again and send the payload finally to the application layer. Then the receiver can find that. Okay, so this is a HTTP request. So that's all for the transmission process. So each layer actually can do something and they will check and finish the corresponding functions and then provide the payload to the upper layer. So that is decapsulation.
Okay, so that's all for the transmission process. So if we give a summary for today's talk, actually the most important concept is this uh, reference model. That this can be OSI reference model or TCP/IP reference model. Actually, they uh, they uh, follow the same type of design concept. And why do we need such layering a mod model? Actually, we have three advantages. First, they they can clearly divide the functions into different parts, and then in each part, in each layer, we only need to do one function. So it's very easy for engineers to develop or to revise or to update the network. They only change the corresponding part. That's okay. They don't need to change the other part. Another advantage is that um, this layering mod model are very easy for industry standard. So um, we can define one standard or several standards for each layer and then um, put them together. That's a network. Okay. The third advantage is that actually this model provides the, a clear interface between different layers so that the hardware softwares can uh, interact with each other and the compatibility can be improved. So that's three key ad advantages. So the data generation and transmission actually require the collaboration between these modules. But this layering module will very easy for uh, compatibility and development.